say, oh, he's a control freak. Everybody's a control freak. Don't kid yourself. It's just somebody's a little more extreme than somebody else. You need things to be the way you think they are. Right? If you went home one day and your house wasn't there, I don't mean an empty lot. There was never a time it was there. And you went by and knocked on your neighbor's door and they don't know you. Right? You'd freak. You would freak out. Right, because that's how you orient and know yourself. That's correct. And by how those you objects. That's right. Those that story. That place. But it really has nothing to do with you. You're mm -hmm. in there. You're experiencing the houses without your house the same as you're experiencing the house with your house. You're the experiencer. You're the consciousness, right? But you have to find a mindset and you're resting on it to say, this is reality, right? According to Garp. <laughs> this is <laughs> according to you, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, you need yours to be the way you defined it to be or all hell breaks loose inside. And we have so many emotions attached to those parts of our environment being where we want them to be. I mean, I'm just thinking about, as you're describing the personality, they're very important to us. I mean, that, I guess that's the illusion it's, that we... It's so deep, you say, it's so beautiful to talk about this. Every single one of those emotions and all of the important to this is because you're panicked in there and lost and this is how you're clinging, how you're defining that it's okay. That's why there's so much emotion behind it. The, the only mm. real emotion is the fear, is that deep, you know what I'm talking about, that deep fear that it will fall apart or something will go wrong or I'll say something, mm -hmm. right? There's just that underlying insecurity of you know what you presented was fake. That's why you're selling it all the time. That's so why you worry about what you look like and what you're wearing, and, and you meet somebody new, oh, I gotta sell yourself again, or you did real well. Like, there's two, two situations that are really bad, right? One is you do bad and everybody boos you. The other is you do really, really good and they invite you back. You gotta do it again. <laughs> you put yourself on the line. Do you understand that? Yes. Right? You're right. risking failure, right? And right. even the most powerful people feel this, and that drives them, right? So what you're driven by is the fear of failure. You're driven by the fear of rejection. You're, pretty normal human stuff, isn't it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That deep-seated fear is the original panic that I talked about. It's still there that I'm lost. As long as I can get things to be the way I define them, I can feel safer. Mm -hmm. I can support it. We call it support, right? Support your concept. Now, I don't have to feel my panic all the time, but it's still there, right? You can be very happy with your family and everything's wonderful, and then somebody dies or somebody leaves. You know, it's not so wonderful anymore. You fall right back into it. It doesn't change one single iota, right? It's like, so the, the question is, are you dealing with the core or are you dealing with the facade? And we are all dealing with the facade and trying to get the outside world to support the facade so that we don't have to deal with the core. Can you understand that? Absolutely. I absolutely do. And the, and the, the facade it, it feels like so much is dependent on the facade functioning, right? To, to keep everything going in our lives that we've also built. It, the and analogy, so, oh, go ahead. No, no, please. The analogy, the analogy I like to use mm -hmm. is you went to school, high school, whatever, with a person that was so insecure. He would never talk to anybody. He was always scared, very introverted. I mean, really just, really far out there, okay? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're grown up now, and you get your Facebook page, and somebody gives you a phone call, and it's this kid. And you have to think about it, and he's strong, talking, mm -hmm. inviting you to come see him. He never used to go outside by himself. He's at, at a park. Would you meet me at the park? I happen to be in the town where you are, and so on. I'd love to see you again. And you sit there and say, God, you've changed a lot. He said, I have completely. I used to be so scared. I'm not scared now anymore. It's amazing. I can go anywhere. I don't feel the fear. Fear. You go there to the park. His name's you know, Paul. And you're looking for Paul. And you don't see anybody. But you see the most amazing scene. You see about 10 of these giant, you know, football player, muscle type people in a circle carrying Uzis and, and AK-47s, all of them, right? And all of a sudden, you hear a little sound from inside the circle. Here, I'm here. It's Paul. You, Paul? Yeah, I'm in here, right? And Paul says, see, I'm not scared anymore. I don't feel fear anymore. 
I feel so secure. I feel wonderful. Right? Whoa. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we do. The bodyguards. That our whole life is a bodyguard. <laughs> the fact that the husband come on time, that people treat you the way you expect to be treated, the fact that every single thing happened exactly the way you need it to be, those are your muscle men and bodyguards. And as long as that's going on, you're okay, relatively. What if I go there and pay those bodyguards more than you paid them? One, two, drop. You have a heart attack. Now, Paul and Nick will freak out, isn't he? That's what happens when your world falls apart. That's what happens the minute anything is not the way you expect it to be. You have some trouble, don't you? If the car in front of you is driving a speed you're not comfortable with, it's not what you're used to, it's not the speed limit, you have trouble, don't you? you start talking in there and complaining, right? Mm -hmm. If your husband's 10 minutes late, if, if he comes home and, and you, you know, prepare dinner or, or, or got a special date's going to happen and he's in a bad mood, so he just walks through and goes in his room. Ooh, that's not okay, is it? That's not okay. There's all kinds of stuff goes on in there. That's the exact same stuff that Paul feels when one of those bodyguards falls down. My shield, my masquerading self did not do its job of protecting me from myself. Spirituality, since we'll get there eventually, is all about dealing with yourself instead of hiding from yourself. Working your way past that panic, that fear, to where it will never return ever again, and there's nothing but love and joy, unconditional as to what is going on outside. The peace, the path us all understanding. That's why. So what would be the first step on that? You have to face path. it. Your first step is, like Freud said, recognition. You recognize, yep, it's true. I am constantly trying to get things my way. <laughs> and, I, and I'm serious about it, right? There's a list of things that better be this way, and there's a list of things that better not be this way. And I am serious about that. And I am completely devoted to making those things happen and not happen, right? Well, that's not a very functional thing to do with your life. That is like Paul, we'll keep using the analogy, like Paul making sure he has enough money to, pay, to make sure he pays off those bodyguards and make sure their guns are working and they're well-trained. No, you're going in the wrong direction, Paul. You don't, you don't want that to be your life, right? right. right? So the right. first is to recognize I have a problem and it's me, and I'm not gonna solve it by hiding from it. So it's not, the problem is not that my husband came home in a bad mood and passed by me and missed all of the, ama the missed the amazing feast I prepared and the the ambiance I created. That's not the problem. The problem is how I feel. But the problem is you can't when... handle reality because you've defined a particular mm -hmm. way to, because you're insecure mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the relationship isn't going exactly right and you put a lot of energy into this to try to feel love and acceptance and all oh, that, you know, pay the bodyguards, do the thing, make sure the guns are good, right? It's just mm -hmm. exactly the same thing mm -hmm. and it didn't work, mm -hmm. right? And now you feel worse, don't you? You feel more insecure, you feel, okay, that's what happens. It's almost as if what's, you're actually far more out of control by needing to be in control because you're going to have to fluctuate that, that's exactly right with everything that happens that's out of your control every single so thing. in fact you're totally out of control the more you're in control well, well, the more you need to be right but that's very deep what you just said we define a world inside ourselves that supports our self-concept and we need that because we're hiding from ourselves behind the self-concept right and because we define the world that way, we need the world to be that way. Right. But the world has nothing to do with what we made up. <laughs> the world is what it is. It's, it's reality. It's, it's beating to a whole different drum. It's beating to science. It's beating, like, it did not rain today. It's my birthday. That, that's stupid. What are you doing? Rain has nothing to do with your birthday. It has to do with meteorology and low pressure zones, right? So you've now left yourself vulnerable to the unfolding of reality is going to destroy you.